Hey guys, it's the Disco Spider, and it's finally time to talk about the entire season 5 of Samurai Jack. I've been waiting for the season to end so I can talk about it, and it's time to, I guess, talk about it. Um, this is going to be an improvised review. This is not like my typical reviews where I write a script, and it's going to be very edited. Well, I guess this video will be edited since I'm going to be making a ton of mistakes here, um, since I'm not the greatest at thinking on the top of my head. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. This is more of a, I guess, my thoughts on the season. And uh, I have reviewed the original season, all oh, seasons one through four of Samurai Jack, the original series. Um, if you want to check that out, um, it's not improvised, so yeah, if you don't like my improvisation, then you can still watch that. Time to get into my thoughts on the show. So let's start with the intro of the show. I like how they switched the intros. Now, I do love the original intro from the original show, but I don't think it would have worked here because the tone in this show, although being a little silly at times, is more serious and is would have wouldn't help the tone at all since the especially the song that uh Will I Am made was a little bit more, you know, the tone was a let a little less serious with got to get back back to the past Sam or I Jack. Um but in here it's a little bit more serious with Jack going through a lot of uh a beautiful cinematography talking about how he's you know he doesn't age and that he wants to get back to the past samurai jack although it's not the greatest because like i don't know it, it's a minute long and when i'm watching the episodes especially when i was marathoning them i was, I was kind of like i just get on with it i just want to watch the episodes instead of seeing the exact same one uh but still it helps set up the tone of the series very nicely and i did absolutely loved it when I saw it the first time when I was watching the episode. And then next, I want to talk about the two main things that I did not like about the original Samurai Jack, which the first one was the animation. The animation in this show is absolutely beautiful. I would give it a perfect 10 out of 10 too. If I was going to rate the original series animation, I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10, even though a lot of people would give it a 10 out of 10, maybe even like a little an 11. But I think there's a vast improvement from the original show since I wasn't a fan of the animation. It's It, it was good, but it wasn't like amazing. A lot of people said it was like moving paintings, but all I could see was just the designs of Dexter's Laboratory, except a little bit more cleaner. But in here, Everything looks absolutely beautiful. The cinematography is the greatest I've ever seen in any cartoon. I loved it, and I just wish they had more cinematography in this show, since it's, like, that and the framing, there wasn't much in this show. Not like the original show, where it was, oh, there was a lot of it, which I did like that from the original show. I did like that aspect. And although the places that Samurai Jack go to does look a little monotonous at times, it still looks absolutely beautiful. And yeah, you can argue that it's because of the technology has improved from the like 15 years from the original show to now. But even by you know the like the designs of the characters, they look a lot better. And since Genji Tartakovsky's style is like the one of the most simplistic I've ever seen, since he's more influenced by um I think Hanna Barbera cartoons and older you know, 80s cartoons that weren't the most stylistic-wise, especially Hanna-Barbera being very limited. So his cartoons, like Dexter's Laboratory, looked very limited in that, you know, simple design where it's a basic square for Dexter, and for Samurai Jack being a basic rectangle with a little bit more shape. And then uh, his other cartoon... Symbionic Titan got a little bit better, but you can still see the basic shape. But in here, a lot of things have vastly improved, and I really like that. And hopefully there's going to be a lot of improvement for Hotel Transylvania 3, but even by that, I don't think it could save that movie from, ooh, the awfulness it's probably going to be. And then the action scenes are absolutely beautiful. I think every single episode has at least one action scene, with a few having two to three. And each one is absolutely amazing. It helps with the cinematography and framing too, when it you know, blends together. And, and the things that Samurai Jack fights is even better than the original, since a lot of times it's just you know robots fighting and you just see oil spilt. And although it does look great in the original show with the fighting scenes, but in here, you know, we see a lot more tension since these are real people. Although, the, yeah, they have robots like uh, Scaramouche or whatever the Sammy Davis Jr. robot is. But we do have Aku's daughters, and we see uh, Samurai Jack finally kill humans and finally spilling blood for, like, the first time. So that's really cool. And the second problem I had with the original show is that it felt too episodic, even though it had a, you know, an actual storyline being told, but... You know that the story is never going to end because it's just the same repetitive thing over and over again. 
But in here, there is an actual story, and I love that. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more, like, there's not a complete story. Um, it's a little bit more episodic at times, especially the first couple of episodes. There is still some plot with Aku's uh, daughters for the first couple of episodes. We see them progress for being, you know, like little kids to training to finally going out to kill Samurai Jack. And I think that's just absolutely amazing. It, it really does bring the tension to the show, especially with the animation and the action scenes with Aku's daughter and Jack. But I really love the progression with the plot where you start off with these you know, seven or nine people that want to kill Samurai Jack, and then Jack slaughters all but one, and then he kind of brings one of them along, and then she starts hating on him, but then learns to, you know, follow the good side and, like, opens her mind, opens her eyes and see that, you know, the things that she was fighting for was for the wrong reasons and fighting the wrong person. So there really was great progression here and like for the original series you can take an episode from season one and put it into season four and nothing would change but in here every single episode needs to be in that order and I love that I love shows that have you know story arcs and even if it's not like giant story arcs like say Avatar The Last Airbender like more like little story arcs where it's little ep like ep every episode is episodic but it leads to the next episode that's what I like. And Samurai Jack, for the most part, does do that, but also has, especially the last season, where, you know, you really need to see every episode, and it really leads to the next episode. And you can really kind of call it, like, a two-parter for, uh, like, the last two episodes are, like, two-parters, where you can just blend it together to make, like, an hour-long movie. Although the last episode wasn't really all that good, but let's talk about that later. So I'm really glad that this season really improved on the two main things that I did not like about the original series. And the reasons why I would call Samurai Jack, the original show, to be good, but not great. But a little problem I had with the show is that sometimes the show can get a little bit too predictable. Especially Ashi's subplot was way too predictable. Like when we see her look at a butterfly and we see that she kind of has that innocence to her. You can tell that she's going to be the one that's going to be the last one to survive and be along with Samurai Jack. And she's going to be a good person fighting f with Samurai Jack against Aku. And that was very predictable. Um, and even the, you know, the the part that every single person that Jack has you know been friends with is going to come back in the very end. That was pretty predictable too. I, could, like, I knew that was going to happen in the final episode. But... The execution on both of those things are still nice, and even if Ashi's plot is predictable, for the most part, I liked it, and the ending where, you know, all the characters come together, although felt too cliched, I still enjoyed it, seeing every everyone come back in the finale. And speaking of characters and stuff, let's move on to the characters. First, we have Samurai Jack himself, Samurai Jack. He is so much better than he was in the original series. Now, I did like Jack in the original series. I thought he was good, but he didn't ha he didn't have any progression. He didn't have any character development. If you look at the end of episode 1 and the end of episode 52, he was practically the exact same character. He didn't change at all, um which w it was because he's a noble person and even all the things, all the good deeds that he done doesn't it doesn't really change his character since he's already a nice guy and um, there's just nothing to change for him. But in here, I love how he's kind of fighting against himself, how he's kind of broken inside, being trapped in this place for 50 plus years has really gotten to him, and he really is trying to find some insan he's trying to find some sanity, but he's just he just can't. And I really love that about Samurai Jack. He is a fully developed character in this show. We not only get to see him fight his inner self in the episode where he gets his sword back, but we also get to see his kind of like dilemma when he first kills a human for the first time, and the second, third, fourth, and fifth, and what have you. And I just really loved following this guy, and I, I just liked how they gave him some development instead of being the same one-note character over and over again, pasted on 52 episodes. And then we have Ashi, where it seems like a lot of people tend to love or hate her. And me, personally, I'm on the middle ground. Now, I don't think she's an awful character, and she's just a plot device. I do think she has a character at first, and then at the end of the episodes, or the, the later half of the season, she starts to become just a bland character. I really love the development that they give Ashi where she's kind of fighting with herself like Samurai Jack trying to find the truth if Aku is actually good or is she's just been lied to for like 18 years of her life or something. We really see her character grow through these episodes and that's what I love to see just growth of character. Character development is the best part of a character 
But then after, I say, episode 7 or 8, when they start falling in love, that's when everything falls apart to me. Well, I'll get to the uh, romance between them a little bit, but after they fall in love, she's just become a bland lead, the love interest, where it's like, oh, I'm with you, Jack, I am by your side, and I'm devoted to you. And I do like how she's kind of, like, forced to be against him with Aku, but then after that, she doesn't really seem to contribute to much, except for being the reason how Samurai Jack got back to the past. And the relationship between Jack and Ashi felt really rushed. And I don't think it was forced, as a lot of people are saying, like, oh, they shouldn't have fell in love. I did felt like this is one of the things that was predictable. Like, of course they were going to fall in love. That's obvious. There were two main leads, one boy, one girl. And you could see there was some, you know, romantic tension between them. Uh, but... They only got one episode to really develop the relationship, and even by that, it felt really too cliched and rushed, where you got the characters kind of like, oh, I'm sorry that you know we accidentally touched hands in a very cliched and awkward way, and it I just didn't care for it. Like, it just came out of nowhere that Samurai Jack just started to kind of like her and feel a little awkward between her, even if you're coming after the other episodes where there wasn't really much tension, um, although it was obvious that there was going to be. Um, and then, right after that episode, they just start falling in love, and everyone was like, what? Um, there was, there's people that ship them, and me, personally, I do ship them, but I would have just loved for them to have, you know, other episodes, like, more episodes to develop their relationship. It just fell out of the ten episodes that they were just like, oh, we're for we forgot to um, develop the relationship, I guess we should do that right before the finale. Um, and then they did, but it felt way too rushed. And then we have my favorite character from the original show, Aku. He is not in the show that much, in this season, um, but I guess it makes sense since the original voice actor died, and, you know, the big best part about Aku was his voice, was his original Mako voice, since Mako was such a great, not only voice actor, but he just had a great voice. And although the guy who voices is now isn't, like, a terrible, you know, doesn't do a terrible impression, he just doesn't have the charisma that Mako had, since he was just an amazing guy. But even with that, um, I was I was really disappointed with him not being in the show. Since in the original show, he was such a funny and amazing character. But in here, he wasn't in it that much. I think he was in, besides the first episode, I think it was in every episode. But he said about, like, what, a couple of lines? Three, four lines? And that's it. And they were also hinting at Aku having some character development with him being very tired. And just very depressed. And he just doesn't care anymore since... His life is doesn't really have any meaning now that he's not really fighting Samurai Jack, and Jack's just kind of, like, gone. And I wish we could have explored more of that, you know, of his depression and all that, since I think Aku is such an interesting character. It would have been so much better, but they didn't have enough time to develop or to really have an episode focused on Aku. Like, it would have been so much better if we had one episode all about Aku and his perspective. But, you know, out of ten episodes, you kind of can't since there's a lot that they're trying to do with this season. And speaking of that, the main problem that I and a lot of people had with this show is the episode count. There are ten episodes, and that is way too short. Now, I think that there should have been at least 13 episodes. This is the minimum amount of episodes it should have had since every season before it had 13 episodes, so it would have made sense. And with three episodes, you could have done a lot to develop the story. Not only you could have focused more on Aku, but you could also focus on the relationship between the characters. You could even give more of a development in uh, Ashi in those last episodes. It would have just made the show, in my opinion, or the season, in my opinion, a lot better with extra episodes to help to help with the plot and to not make things feel so rushed. And another segue here is the pacing. The first couple of episodes had great pacing. It felt a little too slow, but that's Samurai Jack for you. And the slowness actually worked for the show. You know, it, it was just about Samurai Jack going around and the uh, Aku daughters kind of f looking for him and fighting him. And those were, like, my favorite episodes of the series, where it's just him fighting Aku's daughters. But then after, I'd say, episode 6 or 7, everything felt rushed. Like, they just realized, oh, we have three episodes left, I guess. There was, like, there was, there was a giant list that they had to do. I'm like, oh, I guess we have to, you know, get rid of a few of these things and rush everything else. Like, the development between the re the relationship and the ending of all things, and there was a lot of things that they're, they like, it felt like they were trying to do it, but they didn't have enough episodes and enough time, 
and it really sucks, and like I said, there should have been more episodes. And that's a big problem with the show, how the first half of the show had great pacing, and then the other half just felt really rushed. And watching these episodes again, you can easily tell that. And then, let's talk about that series finale. The series finale is probably the worst episode of the entire series, including seasons 1 through 4. In my opinion, of course. It's definitely the weakest episode of this season, and that's because this was the greatest example of the show feeling too rushed. Everything was way too rushed, and I honestly thought there was, this was going to be like a one-hour quote-unquote movie of it, like of just ending the entire series of Samurai Jack, but nope, it was just your regular 23-minute episode, and everything in this episode was just very rushed. Um, there are some things that I do like about the, sh the episode, like, I did like how they brought back the, um, the other characters from the original series, seeing them now, although it kind of felt a little pointless, and it's not like we see them, like, what they're doing now or something, they're just, it's just like, oh yeah, we're here, remember them? And they kind of attack, and it kind of felt a little pointless. Um, and I do like how they brought, uh, the original intro, they finally, you know, showed that in this show which is great, and it does fit in with the show since it's not technically part of the intro. It's more of a, you know, Aku introducing himself in his own Aku funny way. I like that. And um, the ending, which I'm going to talk about a little later, I do like. And the, But the one thing that I hated about the episode was the final fight scene of the entire series, which was Aku versus Jack. This is why I hate the episode, how the fighting just, it felt very rushed like they did not know how to end the show they did not know because we all knew that Jack was going to defeat Aku but they did not know how so they're like uh I guess we're just gonna make him you know fight him and just like slice him and that's it and it just didn't feel right I wish that Aku, cause I, I wish Aku had more of like fighting power since you know Samurai Jack is coming back to the past slices him and is like oh no and then Aku kind of like runs away very you know powerless but it would have been better if there was just this one giant battle between them and if this was a 13 episode season we could have got one giant or not giant but this whole episode dedicated to one fight uh, which honestly would have been amazing if it was just this one giant fight against Jack and Aku um, but you know in different places like they're fighting and then they might transport or one of the characters runs to another location and it just go, goes everywhere. And then you could you can even invite some of the characters back. Like you could have had, you know, some of the characters to help Jack fight. Um, like if he's going on a different location and they're there helping him. Um, or you could have even gotten some bad guys back in the, you know, the old show back to help Aku. That would have been great. That would have been cool. Like the, uh, they hinted in one episode like that one that sucks the soul out of, like, good warriors. Like, like, you could have had him come back, or her, I forget. But you could have had that character come back in the finale to help Jack for a little bit until he leaves or dies or something. But it would have made the show so much, like, the ending so much satisfying if we had this one giant epic fight. But because we only got, you know, a couple of slices of Jack, it just felt pointless. It's like, oh, out of 62, 61 slash 62 episodes... This is how it all ends. Just Jack slicing him in half, and boom, series is over. It just felt very unsatisfying and kind of a little cheap. And also, something that I find funny is that because of the ending, nothing from the original show actually happened. We've been following Jack for 62 episodes, and besides the last episode, or actually not the last episode, besides the entire series, except for the last, you know, couple of minutes of the last episode everything doesn't exist anymore nothing none of that actually happens so it kind of feels a little pointless since there's a lot of times where jack had an opportunity to go back to the past but then decided to save these characters or like you know to help these characters instead of you know going back to the past which is like very pointless since none of that's gonna matter when you go back to the past it's kind of like when you're making your bed you make your bed but then you mess it up at the very you know the end of the day when you're going back to sleep it's like then what's the point of making it if you're just going to ruin again and then lastly the last thing i want to talk about about the last episode is the ending where we see ashi not existing and this is one thing that i was uh when i was watching the episode and saw that they were getting married i was like wait a minute wait a minute that doesn't seem right if aku is dead wouldn't that mean ashi isn't alive, and I, I got I kind of got mad 
at the show being like, this is this is not what would happen. But I kind of got a little, you know, less mad. I was like, you know what? I guess Jack does deserve an ending, like a ha- happy f- final ending from, you know, being stuck in the future for 50 plus years trying to, you know, fight Aku and losing his sanity. I guess it makes sense why we're going to end off. No, we're we're going to end on a happy, happy ending, I guess. But then, like, right when I was thinking that, Ashi was like, oh, no, I can't exist. And she just poofs off. And that is, like, one of the best scenes in this season. I like that. And I like, you know, for so for someone who doesn't like Ashi, she's like, finally, she's gone. And for someone, and for someone who isn't, like... Like, he doesn't hate the relationship, but doesn't love it at the same time. It does, it's a good, satisfying ending to it, since they are in love, but they can't really be together. But it makes sense. And it really helps set the tone of the series, where it's not all happy ending for Samurai Jack. Although, yeah, he did something courageous, and, you know, something that helped save millions of people. But it's at his own risk, which is a main theme from the original series, where... You know, you had Jax kind of sacrificing his, you know, his way to go home just for some people. And that's what he did here where he finally defeated Jack or he finally defeated Aku and saved the lives of millions of people and set his free is set his people free. But at the cost of losing the one he loved, I, I think is a good ending, except, you know, with the entire episode, it just boggles down to a meh to lazy and rushed and uh not that great of an episode but i did like the ending the very last scene where you got jack looking in the horizon with beautiful animation and kind of it's kind of like hinting that there might be more jack adventures we know like even if the show doesn't go on for another season or a movie or something jack is still going to have adventures and is going to be waiting for his friends to come back or um, something like that um so it's a new hope, technically, I guess. Just a new hope for Samurai Jack. And with that, that's my entire thoughts, or most of my thoughts on Samurai Jack as of right now, of Season 5. Um, there is not much I want to talk about. I guess if I did have to give this a rating, um, I'm not good at rating things or anything, because usually when I give a rating, I might go back on the rating like a couple of days later when I'm thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute, this movie is, is, is worse than I remember. Um, but as of right now, as of, you know, my first thoughts on it, watching the entire series twice now, I would give it a solid 8. I would maybe an 8.5. Um, it is better than the original, but it's it does have its flaws. Um, but I still would love to watch it again. And this is still a great mini. If this was like, I guess, Samurai Jack as a whole, I would give a 7.5 to. Um... But, you know, if this was its own thing, if this was a miniseries, which this season does stand on its own, which I love about it, um, it would have made Samurai Jack a lot better. Um, but still, an 8, 8.5. I might even lean towards a 9, but probably not. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy that Adult Swim did this, and hopefully we can get more of this, not just with Gandhi Tartakovsky shows like Symbionic Titan, but, you know, if they if they bring back what I would love if for them to bring back Kids Next Door as a more gritty reboot. Not like uh, very dark like a DC movie, but something like Samurai Jack. And it would work a lot better um, with, you know, I don't know, the tones and the themes of adult. Um, I don't know. I really would love to see Kids Next Door come back in a more gritty way. Um, but this is definitely one of the best reboots slash revivals, since technically it's more of a revival, that we had in a long time since there's a lot of reboots, especially cartoon reboots out there that are really bad. Power of Girls, <laughs> tons tends to go. Um, so hopefully we can see more reboots and revivals like this, since I know there's going to be more cartoon reboots out there. Um, I would love for them to strive more of, th- of this, of this Samurai Jack Season 5. This has been amazing, and I love it. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts on Samurai Jack Season 5? Um, leave in the comments. I'm interested to hear if people, you know, actually love this show or hate or this season or hated it. If there's people out there that think, you know, oh, this is, you know, a terrible, this is, this ruins the original series or something like that. Um, leave in the comments and also like this video if you liked it and, um, subscribe for more reviews. Um, my, my other reviews, my other videos are not going to be like this where it's unscripted and, you know, not me not really knowing what to talk about here. Um, they're more scripted, so check those out. Um, so yeah, I'm the Disco Spider, 
and peace out.